Hey guys, Nick here. Thanks for coming by. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about a really, really serious side effect that happens with liver disease, and it's called hepatic encephalopathy. Now, for me, it's the scariest part of, or was the scariest part of the entire prog uh, prognosis, diagnosis, everything that started up, and it's really what triggered us really hard that something was was really wrong. Um, basically what hepatic encephalopathy is, it's the when your liver stops functioning properly, uh, ammonia starts to build up in your blood. And uh, Wikipedia defines hepatic encephalopathy as an altered level of consciousness as a result of liver failure. Its onset may be gradual or sudden. Other symptoms may include movement problems, changes in mood, changes in personality. In the more advanced stages, you can go into a coma. Now, this explains verbatim what, what happened to me and uh, what caused Carrie to really know that something was wrong and rush me to the hospital. So this is my experience with it. Um, Basically, what happened was uh, one morning I was I was going about kind of my, my normal routine. But one morning I woke up uh, about 430 in the morning and I was in a, a completely different world. Um, it, it felt like um, it felt like a dream almost. I felt very kind of detached. Um, I was kind of cleaning stuff, but I couldn't hold on to things. I was trying to pick things up. Um, I, I just remember kind of rustling around the, the room I was in. I, I didn't recognize my house. Um, I didn't recognize my dogs. I didn't, uh, really recognize Carrie even. I, I knew who she was, but I couldn't remember her name, um, and she heard me uh, kind of rustling around and I, so I went into the room and I was kind of muttering to her in phrases that just didn't make any any sense to her. And um, I left the bedroom again. This is like at 430, 445 in the morning. And she followed me and asked me if I was OK. And apparently I was whining. I was talking like a little little kid. Um, I was talking like you had taken my covers, you know, or, or something like that. And. Um, then I decided I had to use the bathroom and she noticed that I was walking strangely. Uh, I wasn't able to hold things. She'd reach out, give me something. And I would just drop it. My cell phone, I was just dropping it. And, um, my eyes looked glazed. She said very, very distant. And I remember very, very little of this. And she basically broke down you know, crying because she wanted me to go to the hospital and Carrie's not a crier. She, she just isn't. Um, and I resisted and resisted and ended up agreeing that I would go to the hospital because I knew that something just wasn't right. Now, what happened over the next few weeks, I, I can tell you from, from my perspective, um, but none of it ever happened. Uh, what happened to me was um, I thought that I had left work and... I, for some reason, went to the hospital and I, according to the nurses and Carrie, I was being very violent. Um, I was threatening to uh, hurt and or kill a nurse. I was threatening to kill myself. Um, I don't remember any of this. I had uh, sitters sitting with me. Um, I was restrained to, to the bed and uh, the psychiatrist in the hospital came in and they had evaluated that I, it wasn't full encephalopathy that they had diagnosed me with yet, even though that's what was happening. But it seemed like I just had a, a mental break. Now, for the next week or so, um, the only thing I really remember doing is spelling words out loud when I would hear people talking to me because um, I was trying to somehow stay mentally sharp. Um, I was singing the Star Spangled Banner over and over and over again. And uh, I was in this weird psychedelic world and it wasn't the, the good time. It was like being stuck in a really weird dream. Um, I was dreaming that I was at work, but Carrie had to come get me out and I was 
having these illusions that, you know, that they were, um, there were, the nurses were trying to kill me, you know, and I, I didn't want to live anymore. I was having these crazy mood swings. I wasn't sleeping. All this is while I'm at in critical care at the, at the hospital. And what ended up kind of happening was, uh, I had decided that I didn't want the nurses to do any testing on me uh, because I thought if they did test is, testing on me, then they were going to make me better. And I didn't want to get better. Um, I was I wanted to die for, for a lot of reasons. I was tired of being in pain. I was tired of battling alcoholism. Um, and this went on for a long time and Carrie was, you know, there during, during all of this. And so what, what ended up happening was apparently the nurses came in and they were wanting to draw blood. They were wanting to do something and I just wasn't letting them. And, uh, Carrie asked them, you know, can I talk to him alone? So we went into the bathroom in my hospital room and, uh, According to Carrie, and I remember this, I remember this very clearly, um, I just clicked on and said, uh, Carrie, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. Um, I love you, but I, I, I want to die. I, I don't want this anymore. Um, I don't want to put you through this anymore. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, and I hugged her and she looked at me and she said, I understand. Um, and I, I, I can't imagine, you know, being in, in, in her position. Um, and she knew that I was suffering, that I was struggling with a lot of stuff, but she didn't even really know how bad my, my drinking had gotten. Um, so once all of that kind of, she got me to let them do some more tests on me. So, I let that happen and, but still for, you know, probably six weeks or so, uh, maybe two months, my memory was just off. Even as medications that they were giving me were helping to kind of make it, uh, uh, subside and kind of relieve it, you know, they, the doctors still had virtually no hope for me to, to live. Um, as I was coming out of it, I started getting a little bit of memory, but I couldn't keep uh, concentration for more than literally a minute. Um, if you told me something or Carrie told me something, I would remember it for about a minute, two minutes. And if she would ask me again, I, I just couldn't recall it. And that's so scary when you're with it enough to know that you're not remembering stuff, but you're just you're just kind of walking through this haze and it's it's virtually impossible to really wrap your head around what's what's going on so uh, eventually it did kind of clear up um i would say probably around march april of 2022 is when i would consider myself um coherent on a consistent basis uh, I still had the chronic fatigue. You know, I've, if some of you guys have seen the pictures that I posted of myself in my Facebook group, I was completely emaciated. I had a huge, huge belly. I was anemic. Um, it was just really, really um, bad times. Um, and, you know, Carrie was basically having to take care of me um, because... You know, I, I didn't have the mental capacity. I mean, it, it would be like dealing with a three-year-old who's on psychedelic mushrooms. You know, I mean, it's just you're not, you don't have the capacity. And encephalopathy is so dangerous because you can hurt yourself and not even realize that, that you're injured. Um, it can cause a lot of other things, you know, to kind of happen um <clears throat> within your body you know i mean you're you're more prone to infections you're more prone to gi bleeding um constipation is a huge thing because again if you're not going to the bathroom because of the medicines it's building up more and more toxins and 
and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, there's a medication <clears throat> that I was on that was called Lachulose, which is the most awful tasting thing that you could ever imagine. Um, I was having to drink that daily, several times a day, which, you know, kind of helps, you know, to keep those, keep those kind of toxins um, um, away. Now, this only affects people about a little bit less than 40% of people with cirrhosis have this occur. Um, this occurs in very, very, very late stages of liver disease. And it's basically when your, your body is just kind of, you know, shutting down. Um, you know, like I said, some of the big symptoms, you know, that happened, like I said, I mentioned the mood changes and personality stuff, but there's also anxiety or irritability, which I had mentioned, um, before difficulty concentrating, um, a flapping of the hands motion, like really, really anxious, um, cognitive impairment. I mean, it's just, it's really, really dangerous. And if you're by yourself when it happens, uh, it's even more so. Um, so that's kind of my experience with it. Um, I'm kind of back in the groove. I'm getting back to some of the basics uh, that I uh, started with in future videos. I kind of veered off for a little bit just for some variety, but I'm getting back into the technical medical stuff and things that are happening with me. Uh, there's some big stuff kind of coming up here in the future that I'm not touching on yet because nothing's been uh, completely concluded yet. Uh, but I've got a couple of appointments next week um, and a few more here in the next month or so. So uh, more information to come. I love you guys as always. Remember to hit the uh, subscribe button and like the video. Um, also, there is a uh, link for my Facebook group for in-stage liver disease and support. And I'm also on Twitter at Fortness Farms 82. Um, so thanks so much, guys. Uh, sorry it's been about a week since I've posted anything. But I love you all and have a wonderful weekend. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there.